uh, Lord, this family that lost this loved one, Lord, uh, what a terrible thing that they're facing right now, Lord. And I pray you just wrap your arms around them and show them that love that only you can during this, this trying time. Lord, I pray that you would just continue to be with my wife. I pray that you would continue to be with all the ones in our church that have health problems, Lord. I, I think about Fulton and Miss Lil. I think about Miss Judy. Lord, I, I just think about Brother Bobby there. And Lord, I pray you just be with them. Just touch their bodies. Give them strength, oh Lord. And help them, Lord, just get, get past all this. Lord, you are the one that can heal. You are the one that can touch. You are the one that can change things in their lives. And we know that. And that's why we're coming to you and pleading with you for that tonight. And Lord, I ask you right now just to be with each and every person in here. I pray you keep your hand upon them. I pray you would guide them and you would direct them and help each and every one of us live our life for you. Lord, again, just be with us now tonight. And I pray your Holy Spirit will be in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all please stand and take one with us
they had such a tight bond. And, and so she went back with Naomi. And so they ended up here in a uh, field that was owned by Boaz, a farmer. They was in that field and threshing. And Boaz had seen Ruth and he had showed some favor on her by asking his uh, 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 workers to leave some extra wheat or barley, whatever they was gathered, to, to leave it there so that they would have some extra. So this is where we picked up at. And so here in the scriptures, uh, <laughs> Naomi had told Ruth, she said, listen, they're going to be threshing this wheat over at the threshing floor. Here's what I want you to do. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to be washed. I want you to clean up. It says there that it says wash thyself therefore. In other words, clean up. You know, we, we look at that and, and we take that for such granted because it's such a easy and available to us that we have a shower where we can jump in when we get dirty and clean. But back in those days, water wasn't available like it is today. So they would go and, and they, they wouldn't have a bath every day. And, but now we told Ruth, said, Ruth said, 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 go clean up, go wash, go wash. Wash all that dirt that you got on you in that field. And, and I want you to go right now and I want you to wash. I want you to get clean before you go over to the threshing floor. I want you to make sure that you're clean. Remember when, when you used to date and uh, uh, you would clean all up? You, you girls would, would uh, uh, take a bath and you put that perfume on and, and some of you would get that uh, uh, bird dance hairdo going and start putting that spray on your head and you get just right for that for that man that was coming to see you. And, and you men, y'all would take a bath and, and put on Old Spice and, and grit yourself in it and you'd be all shined up and your nose would be shining and, and you'd clean your car up you'd be going to your girlfriend's house and you'd wash up you'd clean up. You know, what's amazing now is after you get married, uh, the men, uh, instead of cleaning up and, and getting smelling good, they want to go to their wife with, uh, with dirt all over them and sweat all over them and tobacco in their teeth and, oh, honey, I love you. And she's going to tell you, go on from me, you stink. I want you to know that if you stink when you don't take a bath. But Naomi was telling Ruth here, she told Ruth, said, go take a bath, go clean up, go clean up. We need to clean up. If you want a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, you can't do it without cleaning up. Now, I'm talking spiritually here, but I'm talking about any sin that you have, a uh, sin that you've done, or sin that uh, things that you should be doing that you're doing, if you don't confess that sin and you don't clean up, then you're going to have a hard time right off the bat drawing and having a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. I want you to know that. You will not have that deeper relationship if you don't clean up. If you're carrying around a grudge, if you're carrying around unforgiving, if you're carrying around all kinds of stuff that you had not took care of, uh, uh, something that you have not confessed to our Lord and Savior, you have got to confess it to get cleaned up. He can wash you. He can wash you clean as snow. You know, uh, it, it's absolutely amazing to me. It's amazing to me that, that people will say, and, and you talk to people, well, I'd like to get closer to God. But you've got to make an effort. You've got to make an effort to get close to God. And the first thing you've got to do is confess. Confess your sins. Don't hold on to them. Don't think you cover them up. Confess your sins to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Confess your sins to your Redeemer so that your sins will be forgiven, so you'll be washed, and so you'll be clean. So the first thing there, he said, be washed. You know, over in James 4 and 8, it says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And you know, uh, 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 you can't worship if you dirty. You can't worship if you if you have sin. You can't worship. You just can't do it. You gotta confess it. You gotta get it right before you can worship in spirit and in truth. You see, you can't worship holding the grudge. You can't worship with hidden sin. You can't worship with pride or whatever you carry. You need to go ahead and wash. Go ahead and ask our Lord and Savior to forgive you. Get rid of it now. 
So you have a chance of drawing closer to him. 2 Corinthians 7 1 says this, Having therefore these promises, dear beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Listen to what Isaiah chapter 1, 15 and 16 says. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away evil, all your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. So we got to get that right. We got to get God to cleanse that, confess that, and get it right. Isaiah 52, 11, listen to this. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from men. Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out in the midst of her. Be ye clean that hear the vessels of the Lord. You see, because of the work of God and because of the blood that was shed on Calvary for me and you, we can be clean from our sins. You know, one thing I've noticed uh, about being a pastor, uh, that, that I've noticed this, that, that when people in church start working together and God starts blessing, you know, the first thing's going to happen after a while, the old devil's going to try to come in there from some different angle. And most of the time, it just starts out with a, a little thing or a little bit of unforgiveness or, or a little grudge. Uh, uh, one of them says something about the other one <laughs> and, and causes, causes problems. But the devil gets in there and tries to drive a wedge to try to keep the work of the Lord from carrying on. I want you to know that. He's going to do that. But when we wash frequently, I don't know about you, I have to wash every day, sometimes two or three times a day. I have to get the sin out of me. Sometimes I have that evil thought. Sometimes I have anger rise up in me that I shouldn't have. I have to confess and I have to get it right. And you do too if you're honest. You have times when you just need to go ahead and wash and get it right. You see, problem is when you don't want to make things right with people and don't want to make things right with the Lord, what happens is the devil will come in and stop the work that's taking place. You see, we should never be so blind and unrepentant when something is doing none to us that we don't like, that we can't forgive after what Jesus has done for us. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, he forgave us. He didn't have to do that. We were a sinful people. We're still a sinful people. But he has got us covered with his blood. Well, the second thing in the scripture there that Naomi told Ruth she needed to do, she said, be anointed. In those days, they would, they would rub oil on and, and perfume and they would get the smelling good stuff. So she said, she said, you go take a bath, you get cleaned up, and then you, you put that perfume and everything on it. And, and you know, you, y'all know how it is. Y'all remember, you know, it ain't been that long since uh, since you were doing that. And you're putting that smelly good stuff on and everything. And, and, and you want your, your favorite person there to notice you and all that. And, and so uh, she told uh, uh, a Ruth, this is what you need to do that. You need, you need to be anointed. You know, over in... Uh, when we start talking about anointing, uh, that's what she was talking about here. But spiritually speaking for us to be anointed, when we got saved, we were anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and lives in us. Now, we can quench the Spirit. We cannot do anything the Spirit leads us. We can quench Him out of our life. But if we listen to the Spirit, the Spirit has anointed us. That Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to live in us. And so over in 1 John 2, 27, it says, But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaching you all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. 
You see, when you walk around deceitful, telling lies, or not living like you should, and you're quenching the spirit, uh, you're not doing anything, and, and there's not any kind of uh, a sweet aroma going up to the Lord. But when you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your life, you know, when, when that goes up to Jesus, it's such a sweet smell when you're doing what He's wanting you to do. <coughs> and, and so many times we, 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 we're just not doing what He tells us we need to do. We need to to, 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 to rely on that anointing that He give us. I mean, He tells us when we do things wrong. He, he tells us what we need to do. He tells us to reach out to people that sometimes uh, He'll tell you to reach out to someone no one else knows that there's a problem. But God knows there's a problem. And when you're obedient, many times you find out that this person's going through something that you can help them with. Whether it's listening or whether it's giving them some advice or whether it's helping them financially or, or, or whatever it is, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we need to listen. And we need, when we do what He wants us to do, boy, that sweet aroma goes up to our Lord. It pleases Him. It pleases Him when we do what He's called us to do. Well, thirdly, as we read the Scripture there, it says that uh, put thy raiment upon thee. Put thy raiment upon thee. Other words, be rightly clothed. Wear the right thing. Ruth, don't go and put those rags on that you've been going out there picking a weed up in the field. Go get your very best stuff. Put your very best clothes on. Now you cleaned up and you smelling good. Put your very best clothes on before you go up there to where Boaz is at. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that we need to put our best on. Materially speaking, we don't need to wear inappropriate clothes. We don't need to do that. But spiritually speaking, we need to dress up in the Lord. We need to dress up in the Lord. We need to put on the garment of praise. Now, first of all, listen now. You got to wash and you got to have the Holy Spirit working in your life before you can even start praising. Oh, you think you praise him. You might go through a little moment where you think you praise him. But you nod until you get right with God. You, when you get right with God, you praise, man. I'm telling you, you can, you can praise him. You can lift his name up. You can be excited about being a Christian. And you need to put on that garment of praise. That's what we need to do. We need to put that garment of praise on. And when we put that garment of praise on and we start praising the Lord, we, we, we don't just praise Him when we come here on Wednesday night. We don't just praise Him when we come on Sunday morning. We praise Him every day. I was praising the Lord today, sitting out there in my office with no air conditioner. The fan was blowing up, but I was praising the Lord. It got a lot hotter outside than it was in there. I was praising the Lord. I was thanking Him for what He's done in my life. I was thanking Him for our church. I was thanking Him for you. I was thanking Him that we serve a God that loves us and cares for us and shows mercy and grace upon us and don't turn His back on us. When we turn our backs on Him, He never turns His back on us. He's always coming. He's always showing us that we need Him. He's always, when we praise Him, it makes such a difference in our life. We draw closer to Jesus. When we get cleaned up and when we, we get the right clothes on we, and, 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 and when we're anointed with the Holy Spirit, we, we can just praise Him so much better. It's real worship. We're not doing a little fake thing. We're not doing religious rituals. We praise Him, Jesus. We praise in Him for who He is and what He's done. Oh, let's praise Him tonight. Let's praise the Lord. I want you to praise the Lord tonight. He's worth all our praise. Just tell Him you love Him and you praise Him tonight. You see, another thing that Naomi told Ruth said, Ruth, you need to go to that threshing floor. And those men, they're going to be threshing their wheat. And then when they get done, they're going to eat and they're going to drink. And then they're going to lay down. She said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go while it's still daylight. Basically, that's what she's saying. Go early. Find out where he's at, his position. She said, so you can go back after he's eaten and after he's fell asleep. 
And you can go and you can raise his garment up and expose his feet and lay right down there at his feet. Lay at his feet. Now some people uh, take this thing and try to make a, a roof somebody she ain't. Uh, I want you to know this, you don't need to be looking in on it in today's <coughs> terms where people are hopping from bed to bed that they're not married with. But this right here, this, this is, there's nothing dirty at all about this right here. Ruth was to lay down at Boaz's feet. And Naomi said, you lay there and you listen to what he said. Where should we be tonight? Where should we be? Shouldn't we be at the feet of Jesus? We shouldn't be bound for a man. We shouldn't be bound for anything else. We should be bound at the feet of Jesus. The Bible teaches that every man shall bow and every man shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord one day. It teaches that. And so we need to be at the feet of Jesus. What a, what, a, what a great comparison. Now, she's at Boaz's feet. And we need to be at the feet of Jesus. You know, Mary, remember Mary? Every chance she got, she was at the feet of Jesus, wasn't she? Worshiped him and praising him. Humbling herself. That's what we need to be, guys. If you want a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, if you want it to be deeper than it's ever been, Get at the feet of Jesus. And He's going to teach you some stuff. When you get washed, when you get the right clothes on, I'm telling you right now, you get the Holy Spirit in your life doing what, allow Him to do what you can, you, you get down there at the feet of Jesus and watch what He does in your life. Just watch what He does. It's amazing what Jesus will do. Remember now, this, this story started out bad, didn't it? They lost their husbands to a famine. We're going through a famine now. This COVD-19, it's, it, it's a famine in, in the world right now. So I don't know what was going on back then, what kind of famine there was, whether it was a drought or, or whatever it was, but here's what I do know. They was in a tough situation. They were having to scrape and scrape just to stay alive. But then they knew that they had a kinsman redeemer in Boaz. And so Naomi said, Ruth, you lay at his feet. You lay at his feet. And I want you to know tonight, brothers and sisters, if you want a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, the other thing you need to do, you need to be fully committed. <laughs> you can't ride a fence with Jesus. You can't be over here one day, oh, I'm praising Jesus, oh, he's the best, oh, he's my Savior, I love him so much, and just forget about him for two or three weeks. It don't work like that. Not if you want a deeper relationship, you want to grow, grow closer and closer to him. So that's what you have to do. You have to be fully committed. Wash thyself therefore and anoint thee, put on thy raiment upon thee, and get thee down to the floor, but make not thyself known to the man till he has done eating and drinking. And it shall be when he lieth down, thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie, and thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay down, and he will tell thee what thou shalt do. And Ruth said to her, All that thou sayest to me, I will do. Now listen. That's the way we need to be. That's the way we need to be. When the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us, when the Lord speaks to us through the Word, through the Holy Spirit, whatever, whether He, he may even use a person or a circumstance, when He speaks to you, You should say, all that thou sayest, Lord, unto me, I will do. I will do. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready to draw closer to Him? You're on the right track right now. 
You need to draw closer to Him. Just do what He tells you to do. Don't be scared of Him. Not many of us say He's going to send to Africa to be a missionary. But if He does send us, we need to go. And be what He calls us to be. Because He's going to take care of us if we listen to Him. But brothers and sisters, if you listen to that old devil out there, that's the prince of this world, you're going to stay miserable and messed up all the time. And you'll never be what God intended you to be. So Boaz, when she woke up, Boaz said, he said, here's the, here's the deal. I'm going to bless you. You know, it was so hard for them to gather that wheat. They didn't get much. Boaz said, y'all, <coughs> call for his guys that his farmers that were working on farm. Hey. Bring it over here. He loaded her down with it. Behold, hold it, hold it, man. It says he loaded her down with that wheat. He gave it to her. Isn't that amazing? He took care of her. That's what Jesus does for us. When we listen to him and do what we're supposed to do, he's going to take care of us. He's going to give us more than we need. Do you want that deeper relationship? You say, well, Brother Randy, you just don't know what's on my plate. I'm telling you, your plate ain't no fuller than Naomi and Ruth's plate was. I'll tell you that right now. Working night and day just to get enough stuff to eat. But when that kinsman, redeemer, stepped in, he changed everything for them. When Jesus stepped into your life and you asked him to save you, he changed everything. But let me ask you, do you want a deeper relationship? You can have it. You can have it. But you gotta be committed. John 14, 21 says, He that hath my, my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself in him. So Boaz, so Boaz, took care of him. It's not the end of the story. It's not in the story. You can read on when you get home and find out that, that Ruth ended up marrying Boaz, but I'm not, I ain't got that far. I'm not going to get that far from my But Boaz, <coughs> Boaz did receive her. And Boaz did reassure her. And when you asked Jesus to save you, he did receive you. And he reassured you that if he takes care of the birds of the air and they don't plant nothing and they don't never go hungry, he's going to take care of us. He's going to give us food, shelter, everything that we need because he is our redeemer. We will be redeemed. <clears throat> he said, And now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou require. For all the city of my people do know that thou art a virtuous woman. And now it is true that I am thy near kinsman. How about there is a kinsman nearer than I? Tarry this night and it shall be in the morning. That if you will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, well, let him do the kinsman part. But if he will not do the part of a kinsman to thee, then will I do the part of kinsman to thee as the Lord liveth? Lie down until the morning. And he replenished her. 
And he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. And she went and showed Naomi. You see, Ruth ended up marrying Boaz. He took her as his wife. And they had a boy. You know what that boy's name was? The boy's name was Obed. O-B-E-D. You know who Obed was? Obed was the grandfather of King David. Isn't that amazing? How Jesus can take us from nowhere, having nothing, and can use us to do great things for God. Oh, Ruth washed, Ruth anointed herself, Ruth put on special clothes, and Ruth was fully committed. We need to be fully committed. We don't need to quench the Holy Spirit. We don't need to let the flesh rule our lives. And then when you go all the way down to verse 18, brothers and sisters, there's something else you need to know. When you draw near to Jesus, sometimes we have a problem with not listening. And sometimes we have a problem when Jesus don't answer our prayers just right away. But all the way down in verse 18 it says, sit still. Sit still. You're doing what you're supposed to do. And you haven't heard an answer to your prayer. Sit still. Sit still. God's working. He's working, brothers and sisters. And he's working in our lives. Sometimes we just need to be patient and sit still. God ain't on no clock. We're so clock driven. We get all messed up sometimes. God's not on the clock, so we just need to sit still and wait for what God has for us if we don't hear from Him right away. Maybe tonight, <coughs> maybe you need to come tonight. Maybe you, you just need to come and you need to bow before <laughs> Almighty God and, at the old fashioned altar. And maybe. You just need to confess your sins to Him. Not out loud, but to Him. He hears you. When you humble yourself and confess those sins, it makes a difference. Are you willing to come and do what you can to draw nearer to Jesus tonight? If you're out there or in here tonight and you never accepted Jesus, that's the first thing you need to do is ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Confess your sins to Him. Ask Him to help you turn from your sins. Repent. And tell Him that you believe He's the Son of God who will save you. The Bible says He will save your soul. So let me ask you tonight. Do you need to draw closer to your Redeemer? <clears throat> that's the question only you has to answer let's stand Father thank you for your blessings and as Brother Jesse plays a, a little bit of music tonight I pray that someone needs to come to this altar that they'll come